book of Matthew. We appreciate your prayers. We want to give strength and guidance and direction. We try to remind His Holy Spirit to preach this morning. Uh, in case you're wondering, we got uh, a little bit of a medical procedure done Monday. And uh, voices steadily improved <coughs> little by little. And uh, hopefully it will stay good uh, for the remainder of this service. In fact, the rest of the day. Uh, but especially during this time. Uh, I can... Um, be disappointed with the rest of the day. I uh, really be disappointed if I can't do what I want to do this morning. Amen. Our times and our chance change all the time. And we're not guaranteed how things are going to be. But this one thing we know, we can count on God. He's ever the same. And He changes not, His Word tells us. I'm the one I got and I change not. And so I appreciate knowing that I can go to Him and count on Him. Amen. When maybe we could think, maybe count on others, we can count on Him. And so uh, I appreciate each one come out in our service this morning. I appreciate the beautiful song and our time of worship and music. And I pray that you just listen to the sweet spirit of the leadership of God this morning uh, for the things of your life. Uh, be sure to know Him as Lord and Savior as the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. Amen. Uh, the one who uh, it's not a one and done God. He continues to supply <coughs> our every need. Alright, look in Matthew chapter 2. <coughs> Give myself a little while again. Let's start with verse 1. Title of today's lesson, sermon, Gifts for Jesus. Gifts for Jesus. Alright, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east, <coughs> from Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. <coughs> and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. And now Bethlehem, the land of Judea, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule thy people Israel. <coughs> then Herod, when he privily called the wise men, inquired with them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child when you found him. Bring me word again that they come and worship him also. And they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child and Mary, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country and another way. Let's pray. Our saving King, Father, we humble ourselves before you today and pray for your strength. I pray God for your touch. Lord, I pray, Father, for your word. Just speak to each heart that's here today, Lord God, what we have to say we've studied. I pray that you'll bless the uh, Father information and encouragement, strength on each one that's able to hear. We pray especially, Father, for those that don't know the gift of life who have not received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our Father, I pray that they might be able, Lord, to understand and realize how good, how precious this little baby is, that gift that was given. I pray, Father, each of us, Lord, to be able to say amen and yes, amen in our hearts, Lord, in this service ends. I touch the knees, Lord, Father, we pray. There's much sickness and hurt on the ground. We pray for each one. Pray your abiding hand and guidance and direction for me, Lord, for in Christ's precious name. We ask these favors. Amen. <clears throat> we 
when uh, Jesus saves a sinner, uh, what we are is our gift from God. <coughs> what He does in our heart, it's His gift to us. After we're saved, what we become is our gift to God. Amen? And uh, that's why it's the gift that keeps on giving. He saves us from hell, saves us from sin, saves us from the bondage of sin, and gives us a new standing and places upon us His love and His mercy and His strength uh, because ours is not worthy to be compared with the gift that He's able to give. Amen. And so I think he, as I study these Scriptures today, I think about the gift that God gave to us. And I'm wondering about the gift that we give to Him. And the wise men are the gift givers in the Bible, right? And they're the ones who went out and desired to be able to worship the King and to get closer to Him. And so I want to talk about the gifts that the wise men gave. <coughs> Look at verse uh, 1 and 2 of Matthew 2. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. And so what did the wise men give as a gift to the baby Jesus, to the baby king Jesus when they came? Well, before they actually came, they started mounting up and calculating <coughs> There are gifts that they might give to God, give to Jesus, give to the baby king. A gift that would be representative of the best that they could give and give to the one who deserved it all. Amen? We don't deserve gifts on Christmas. We deserve to give all of our gifts to Him. I'm reminded of the crowns that the Bible tells us uh, that we receive when we get saved and we begin to work for Him and the crown of salvation and the crown of righteousness and the crown of our works and uh, the crown of life and all of these crowns, I believe, when we get to heaven and we see Jesus upon His throne, we're going to give Him all of those crowns. Now, but those are the things that He has already gave us. How about the things that He's gave us that a lot of people don't even realize that they've been given uh, to from God for them to be used for His glory? And that's the gift that I want to kind of think about today. Uh, so they, the wise men, uh, they started to give their time. <coughs> their time uh, when they saw the star in the east. And so the best I could come up with, uh, three or four years before they actually got to Jerusalem uh, to ask Herod where the, the king was to be born, uh, they saw his star in the east. And so when Jesus was born, that star appeared to them in uh, wherever they were in the east, and it told them that something miraculous, uh, something amazing happened. And when they saw the star, uh, they got record and understanding uh, that the baby king was born. And so at that time, uh, they began to make preparation uh, to go to Jerusalem uh, that they might present their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But before they actually started their journey, uh, they started to calculate the time uh, that the star appeared, how long it would take them, uh, between three and four months, and gather up the things that they needed uh, for this journey. I want us to understand uh, that the time was part of the journey uh, that they put into to worship the king. And so we look at that as part of it. I'm reminded of a missionary uh, that I read a long, long time ago, many years ago, about how uh, she was in Africa and she was ministering to a tribe there and her Sunday school class and the lesson uh, that she taught and all the things that was involved in it. And there was a little uh, uh, boy in that village uh, that heard her talk about loving the ocean and being able to put her feet in the sand. And so he took off, had a jar in his hand. It took him three uh, days to get to where the water uh, was in the ocean. 
And he gathered up that bottle of sand, uh, put it in it, kept it, and he brought it back uh, to this uh, missionary and presented the gift of it. And she said, well, this is amazing. Uh, why that you would go through all of this trouble uh, to present me a gift of sand? How long did it take you? He told her, uh, how long? Three days there, three days back. Uh, boys about 12 years of age would be earth shattering for us. Today wasn't all that much for them. Uh, they did a lot of that traveling in that back then during that time. And she said, this, is, this sand is such a great gift. And the little boy said, no, it's not the only part of the gift. The other part of the gift is the journey I took because I love you for what you've done to go get the sand and bring it back. So we don't want to discount uh, the journey, amen, because that's part of the gift uh, that God gave us when Jesus left heaven and he came to live as a baby and then a man, a perfect and sinless and holy, and he gave us that gift of the journey uh, of it in our lives. And we can say this this morning, thank God for the journey that Jesus gave us when He decided to come and be our Lord and Savior and our good God. Amen? Amen. And so that's part of what the, that He gave us with of that, that time what? Uh, from the Old Testament up to the time where Jesus was born, it was prophesied that He would come. And Jesus has not let me down with the promises that He made uh, that He was going to do all the things that He did for me and for you. He has satisfied every one of them. So I say this morning to you once again, uh, what God has given to us is our gift from Him and salvation. What we give back to Him in our holy living, our righteous life, is our gift back to God. Uh, because God doesn't want your wallet. God doesn't want your gold and your silver, uh, your myrrh, your frankincense. God wants your heart. He wants to know this morning that what you do for Him in living, you do because you care. You do because you love uh, this morning. And isn't that the great message about Christmas? The love of God that transcends every nationality, every race, every color, every gender, every age. Amen. It transcends all of it, no matter how old, how young, what nationality, what color of your skin. Jesus loves you. He proved it on the cross of Calvary. Someone said, you know, the Bible never tells us uh, that Jesus loves us. And I think that it does kind of in uh, shaded ways, uh, maybe, uh, not outright ways, but whenever we think about what He went through, it shouts volumes about His love. Amen? And so we've got a three or four month journey and the time and preparation to get involved with that and the need they need to come up with a travel plan and find out what route they would take uh, to get to where Jesus was uh, that they might be able to worship the baby king and you think about that journey that they started to take and that being part of the gift that they had and then camping under the stars every night. Now that would kill some of us. If it took three or four months to do it and camp under the stars every, uh, for three or four months, it'd be an awful hard thing to do. But I dare, dare say this morning uh, that it was something that they wanted to give. And so the time involved in all of that, camping out under the stars was part of the gift. And so then they come to the cost of their gift, the cost of the wise men's gift and what they have. Well, we know the gold and frankincense and myrrh, they're rather pointed out to us in the Christmas story. And they were expensive. Uh, they weren't a king's ransom by any means uh, because after they presented their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, uh, Mary and Joseph weren't rich by any means. And so they, they had enough money uh, through these things to take care of uh, the next couple of months that they had uh, that they needed these things where Joseph was going to set up his little shop again and begin to do what he needed to do to provide for his family. And so this part that they gave, the gold, frankincense and myrrh is part of the gift that they gave, but it was not in the entire uh, thing that they gave. So think about this. Uh, they had wear and tear on their bodies. Uh, they had to leave their families and leave them in someone else's care. Uh, they had cost involved in the gold, frankincense, and myrrh and also getting up guard 
and folks to go with them. And so that was all part of the gift in the cost of it that they wanted to present to Jesus. And when they got to Jesus, uh, they presented to Him all the gifts that they had, all the travel that they had taken, and everything involved in it that had no real value monetarily that you could place on it, their time, and all of it together when they got to Jesus, they did what a lot of people do on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday morning and evening. And they gave their gifts to Jesus or they unloaded their burdens that they had carried all that distance and they presented their burdens, their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they presented the burdens that they had and the hardness and the tiredness of the journey and they gave them to Jesus. Let me tell you, friend, this morning, if you think that all they gave was gold, frankincense, and myrrh, you missed the rest of the story, the best part of it, because they gave everything they had as a gift to Jesus. The journey, the calluses, uh, the sleep deprivation, everything that they had for the journey, they gave to Jesus as part of the gift that they presented to that baby boy. Now that baby boy may not have understood all of that. Maybe they told Mary and Joseph that they came from a long distance. Maybe they told Mary and Joseph how long it took them to do it. And maybe they didn't do all of that stuff. But they presented the gift that they had. And it was understood to be gifts for a king. Mary, we understand in our Sunday school lesson, uh, pondered all these things in her heart, wondered at the salutation from the angel. And then when Mary got to Elizabeth, uh, she said the same thing to her that the angel told Mary. Blessed art thou among women. Mary told uh, Elizabeth, her cousin, the same thing. Blessed art thou among women. And I say to you uh, that the things that God has given to us, the talent, the time, the ability to worship Him, those are all things that we give to Him that God has given to us first. Amen? So we're just giving back a portion of the things that God has blessed us. We can give to Him. They put down their burdens. They gave their burdens. They presented them to God. They gave them to Him. At the time that they had the cost that was in it and the burdens that they were able to be lightened away from. And you think about that. Well, uh, we've got gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They're valuable. I don't mind carrying them. I don't mind how heavy they are. I don't mind the time involved in it. And the journey having to carry them all that way. I don't mind it at all. When you get right with God, you won't mind the time. You won't mind the burden. You won't matter about the miles. You'll gladly give those things and carry those things to present them to the king. Amen. After all he's done for you, yes. how can we do any less? Amen. Amen. I dare say that we've not done anything collectively. All of us together, collectively, we've not done anything near as what Jesus has done for individual people. Amen? And we can count it all together. In fact, I'm going to go out here and say it, that all the gifts that man have and all that they give, time, journey, planning, worship, they've not given back collectively the entire world what Jesus has given to each individual. Amen? The precious gift of His love and mercy. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 29, and 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Amen? And He said, I will give you rest. When they came to Jesus laden with everything they had, they laid it down and they were lightened from their burden. So I take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest under your souls. I believe the wise men found that rest under their soul. And then thirdly here, take my yoke upon you, and for my burden is light. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Also in 1 Peter chapter, chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Amen. Which brings me to the point that I want to ask you about this morning. Are you one of the wise people? 
Amen. Are you one that is wise today? Have you given the gifts that God has given to you back to Him, presenting them to Him? And you think about it. When you get saved, what do you give to Jesus? Well, you give Him your whole life. In Matthew chapter 13, we read a couple of stories about some people. A man, a merchant man, who went traveling and he was looking for a pearl of great price. And when he found that pearl of great price, he went and sold everything that he had that he might be able to own that one pearl of great price. The other story talks about how that a man was going along and he found a treasure in a field. And he went and sold everything that he had and he purchased that field for the treasure that was in that field. And so the wise men, the wise women, amen, they're going to give everything that they got away. They're going to place everything that they got uh, far away from them so that they can gain that one treasure, that one pearl of great price, that one gift that keeps on giving, that one Lord and Savior who was a perfect baby, who was a perfect individual. Uh, there was no sin, no fault found in him. He was perfect in every fashion and he gave his self to us that we might be able to have him in our hearts and in our lives. Look back into Matthew chapter 2 with me for just a moment. Uh, something kind of stuck out to me as I studied and I uh, want you to look at it with me like I found it this morning. We're going to start reading all the way up to verse 9. And then we're going to do something again back with it. I want you to think about this. When the wise men, the Bible says, come to Herod, Herod told them where uh, the, his wise men said that the baby king was going to be born. And when they heard that, when they heard the king, they departed and lo the star which they saw in the east. Now that star evidently stopped shining so that when they got to Herod, prophecy could be fulfilled. And they found out by introducing themselves to Herod and what they were all about and doing, uh, that star after they left reappeared. Lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Not the young baby, he's now a child. He's anywhere from three to four months to two years of age. I say that because Herod wanted to kill all the babies when he found out uh, that Jesus was born from the time that the wise men told them that they saw the star up to the point that they were in and so that he was evidently somewhere between three to four months of age up to two years of age and Herod killed all the babies from two years and under. Alright? And when they saw the star, which they saw the eat before them, till they came over and stood where the young child was, verse 10, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasure, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now I want us to leave out verse 10. When they heard the king, they departed. Below the star which they saw in the east went before them. So they came and stood over where the young child was. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened the treasure, they presented unto him gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, it really doesn't do any harm to the story as a story to leave out verse 10. But how in the world are you going to leave verse 10 out? Because that's part of the reason that they came. There was something about what they knew about Old Testament Scripture about this baby king that when they started this journey, they discounted, did not pay attention to the time, the cost, the value, and the burden that they would bring to worship. And when they worshiped, the Bible says they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. 
with extreme joy they worship. They were so proud and happy that they had taken the journey and the star was now going to lead them to the place where the, the baby Jesus was at. They find him in a house. What do modern day wise men bring to Jesus? Amen. Gifts for Jesus. The thing that we give him. What do we give him? Very much like the wise men. Isn't that amazing? Very much like the wise men. 2,000 years hasn't changed. And we're still giving the same things to Christ. And these are things that I don't think that he's unhappy to get. I believe that he's in fact very satisfied with the gift that we bring. Our gold, frankincense, and myrrh are our goods, our value. Amen. And we give them all away that we might gain Christ. The Apostle Paul put it like that. Being a Pharisee, the son of the Pharisee, being raised and chained uh, by uh, one of the greatest teachers of his time, he said, I counted all as lost. That he might gain Jesus Christ. So when we come to him, we give up this world, and we gain Jesus Christ. We give up our burdens, casting all care upon him. We give our time, our life to Jesus. We give our talents to Him. Amen. Our abilities as a teacher, as a singer, as a musician, as a deacon, as a worshiper. We give all of these things, our talents to Him because He's worthy of all of them. He's worthy of the monetary. He's worthy of the time. He's worthy of the journey. That's what living for Jesus is all about. Counting Him worthy for our lives to be His. Amen. We give ourselves to Him completely. We think about our talk. It's His. Our walk. It's His. Our thinking. It's His. Amen. In fact, everything of our life, when we get right with God, should be given to Him. Every part of our heart, all of our hands and the work, our feet, where they go, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, everything about us, should belong to Jesus. For the gift that He's given to us, that gift that He gave us, we'll never, ever be able to pay Him back for. And you know what He wants? Just our hearts. Just our hearts. Because if He has our heart, we'll give to Him gladly our every day. Amen? And so giving to Jesus, giving gifts at this time of the year, it's a two-way exchange, isn't it? Folks buy us gifts, we buy them gifts, or they make us gifts, or we make gifts for them. It's a two-way exchange. As I mentioned already, what Christ gives us is going to be greater than anything we can give Him. But He values equally our heart being given to Him as His life is being given for us. That gift. Amen? Do you think about it? We have our time, our burden, our journey, all these things, our disappointments, our troubles, our heartaches, all of these things we give to Him. I was listening on the radio a Friday. I was, I was driving around and uh, one of our talk show and they were talking about uh, gift cards. And the idea was and they were asking the ladies, ladies, do you like receiving a gift card? And some of the ladies said, yeah, a gift card is good. Or a hundred dollar bill folded up is just as good. <laughs> and uh, they said all of these things like that, they have value. And there were a few ladies that said, no, I don't want a gift card. I want some value put into it. I want some feet being moved to the gift. I want some thought being given to the time of the gift. Even if I wrote a list and they know about the things that I want, I want them to pick out a gift that they're choosing for me. And so that was the way that a lot of that went. And then one lady said, yeah, I'm not wrong. I'm not messed up with a gift card. And here's the gift card I want my husband to give me or my children to give me. I want the gift card to say something like this. Uh, in exchange for uh, any gift monetarily that gift, I'm going to do the dishes for a month. 
I'm going to do uh, this vacuuming uh, for a month. I'm going to do this and that and the other. And that lady said, I want the gift of their time yes. and energy involved in my life. And that would tell me that they're giving me something that they value. The thing that I thank you the most, today's Christmas Eve, tomorrow being Christmas, the thing that I think <coughs> they value you the most is the time that you give to them to be in her presence. Now, there's a, a wrestler or a, a bodybuilder, a football player or something, and the postman is walking, post lady's walking up to the door. You may have seen the commercial, and he's doing a little thing with his little kid. Uh, here's the uh, spout, and here's the picture, and you pour it out, and he tilts like that and falls to the ground. And uh, the greatest gift that you can give to anybody is your time. When you think about Jesus being born uh, 2,000 plus years ago, uh, He gave that time. To, uh, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created time. And why is that verse of Scripture in the Bible? For us to realize that God is giving us time. He's giving us His time. And whenever the Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, uh, what did God give us? Emmanuel, His presence. His presence right there in our lives at that time. And then Emmanuel means God in <coughs> us. Amen? And so God came to give us His time. 33 and a half. Some odd years of glorious perfection without spot and without blemish. And then whenever that, that time was expired, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. So think about it. Jesus gave the gift of His life for the whole entire world. I read some time ago that says the day that man's been on the earth with Adam and Eve up to our present time, and this was probably 15, 16 some years ago, there have been 40 billion people born on the earth. 40 billion people. Jesus came and died for all of them. For every one of them. Now, we uh, that been that long. There's probably been a few billion added since then. And Jesus died for all of them. And no matter how long life goes, time goes, Jesus died for all of them. What do we give back to Him? What are we willing to give back to Him? After what He's given us. The promise of eternal life in heaven. What do we give to Him? We give Him our heart. Our heart is the expression of how much we care for what He's done for us. I'm kind of like the lady that said, I want to give a card that says, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this for you. Now, buy the earrings and the necklace for me, cheap. Give the gift of your time. Spend time. That's what we're going to do today. Right? What the family of faith does when we meet on Sunday. Is we give our time one to another. I thank God for the church. Amen. There's a lot of people who don't like the church, don't go to church, and uh, say that the church done wrong, this, that, and the other. And that, those things happen. Right? I mean, in a church family, those things happen. They also happen in your regular family. Amen. But you don't go to bed and just... I ain't going to see you no more. <coughs> Gary, you done me wrong. I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> you think not? We don't do those kind of things. You shouldn't go to church. Here's the big part of that. Jesus didn't do you wrong. <coughs> he, he did you right. And so when you reflect that upon the church, you're reflecting that back toward him. He didn't do you no wrong. In fact, everything that he did was good. Yes. Amen. When he created the world in six days, rest the seventh, now God said it's good. Amen. It's good. And when Jesus died on the cross for your sins, it was a good thing. That's why they call that Friday that was death, Good Friday. It means a lot to me to know that I'm saved. My name's written in the Latin Book of Life. And I wouldn't trade my life with uh, Donald Trump's or whoever the richest man in the world is. I wouldn't trade my life with him. I enjoy my relationship with my God, my Lord, my Savior, my family, my friends, my church family. Amen. I count them more than the treasures of the world. God's been good. <coughs> what are we giving to Him? We 
understand? <laughs>